It's John here again, hope you're well. Now, I can't believe it was four years ago that my good friend Alan called me up and said he'd got a friend who had done an extreme modification on a Volkswagen Bora. And by extreme, that does mean putting Ferrari wheels onto a Volkswagen Bora. I will put a link in the description if you want to sort of click back and have a look at that. And over 65,000 people uh, watched that video. Since then, I've not really done anything on, uh, or covered anything on modification of cars. Um, but this week I had a call from a gentleman who basically told me that he was in the process of doing some modifications on a BMW 325D. Um, and these modifications, albeit a lot more subtle than the ones done on the Volkswagen Bora, were certainly quite interesting. And not only that, well worth doing if you own um, a BMW car of that type. So I went along to have a look at the modifications he'd done and just try and understand why he'd done them. Let's go and have a look at this modification to the BMW 325D. I've only ever had Fords before this BMW. Um, I was doing about 18 to 20,000 miles a year and based on that new car finance was just too expensive. And I actually had to pay Ford 2,000 pounds to take my previous car off me. Because of the PCP Because of the PCP mileage. The, so yeah. I just, I didn't want the hassle of that anymore. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to change those yeah. those blue ovals as much as I'll uh, back them there I, I did want to try something different um, mm -hmm. so after a bit of searching and trying to work out budgets I decided to go for an older car that was under mileage than um, the alternative which was the newer F series which was average mileage but a basic spec yes so I so went for a high spec older car mainly down to the engine so I could afford a 3 litre E series whereas the F series would have highly likely have been a 4, uh, a four cylinder 2 litre diesel right so you preferred the 3 litre yeah. yeah for reliability yeah BMW 3 litres are usually quite bulletproof yeah um, this is a 2011 car so it's got the N57 engine um, and it's the 325 rather than the 330 diesel diesel yeah um, and I picked it up from Edinburgh, which I live in the Midlands near Birmingham, so it's a bit of a trek. And right. I actually bought it without seeing it. And wow. I, I booked a one-way plane ticket and I flew up and drove wow. it drove So you it literally bought it off a picture off on a the picture. internet? Well, and videos. I got, yeah. I, it was from a dealer. They'd, uh, the guy who had this before, one owner, full BMW service history, he traded it into Nissan. And then um, the dealer that I bought it from bought it off Nissan. Right. Uh, all the history mm. was all there. Right. It was actually owned by a professor from Edinburgh Uni. So, this car okay. from, from factory is very, it's got eight and a half thousand pounds worth of optional extras on it from the factory. Right. So this right. was a 44 grand car. New. Well, okay. uh, so it tinted windows from the factory, didn't have to do anything about that. The Xenons, they were from factory. Right. So very, very high spec car. Um, and I, when I bought it, I paid just over 10 grand for it yeah so you've got a real bargain with so, it the car we're looking at now though yeah is not how you bought it no because you've modified I've done, it. I've done a few little bits and pieces to it i i call it uh, oem plus okay so it's so you've uh, tried to be yeah. subtle I've, I've enhanced the factory specification let's put it that way the when i picked it up um so as I said, 2011 plate, it had 50,000 miles on it when I picked it up. So well under mileage, done about 7,000 miles a year. Yeah. Um, one owner from new and he just hadn't done anything to it. Right. It was completely so you, stopped. Let's have a look then and see what you've done to it the then. The first thing I did was get some black kidney grills. Okay. So when I um, picked up the car, they were chrome, yeah. as a photo will show. And that was the only chrome on the car. 
Right. There was no other chrome. It's got black lines all along the door sills and everything. But for some reason, BMW put chrome grills on it, which just didn't suit it. It's one of the right. first things that most people do, even on the F series cars, that when they pick them up, just black grills straight on them. They look right. much better. So, than and it does look good. It does look really good. Yeah. Especially in the uh, space grey. Okay. Which it, I think is actually yes. one of the nicest factory colours yeah that bmw did for this car uh, where did you get the grills from just ebay ebay yep, right eBay okay yeah rough cost of that about 17 pounds that's amazing so a whole transformation yeah. for 17 pounds completely UK. changes the face of it amazing uh and the next thing i did as soon as the v5 came was put yep. my number plates on it yeah which i'd already ordered the uh M performance surrounds yeah and some 3d metal so these so I was going to say yeah so these these plates are actually I don't know whether we can catch it on there we, they do stick out that 3d and you've got the M power uh, logos along the bottom as well of the plate so it's a plate holder with M power logos yes yeah. nice subtle like you say very subtle, subtle. yeah okay uh, another thing I did was change the bulbs in the halos I don't know whether you've right. seen that, but these, yes. so from standard, they're a yeah. very orange bulb, yeah. which next to the Xenon light, just, it, it looks odd. So I tried LEDs, yeah. uh, I spent a fortune trying out different LEDs, and they were all just rubbish. Okay. So uh, these bulbs are actually eight quid um, Xenon effect halogen bulbs. And, right. I'm, and I'm over the moon with them. From a eBay again? Or? Amazon. Amazon, was. right, amazing, these, amazing. These halos have a yeah. bit of a design fault in the fact that they are just one bulb that does both and it's a, it's a light tube linking the two. Oh, okay. So the bulb goes in this one section yes. and then it shines through into that one. So right. this, the, the center halo is always brighter than the outer one. Yeah. But with LEDs, yeah. the outer one was so dim you could barely even see it at all. Right. Um, whereas this, because it's a halogen bulb, it's the light is spread much more So the more lesson evenly. from that is the LEDs don't really work properly. You've Not got to in go the, halogen. Uh, in exactly, this setup. Exactly. In this setup. And I, I found these cheap halogen bulbs that are coated in blue um, that give a xenon effect which match the colour of the xenon, xenons a lot better than I thought they were going right. to. Yeah. And actually in they darkness yeah. they are bright white. Yeah. And I've got a photo which, uh, we'll which, we'll get, which we'll put on now which yeah. shows the fog lights which are still the standard yeah. colour and these on at night time and you can see, see the, difference the difference between the two and they're right. both still halogen interesting bulbs. coming around to the side then side of the car what do we got so now? The, the the most recent change i made to the car even if, which happened only in the last two months or so was that i changed the alloys okay and although it's probably the biggest change it actually cost me the least right and i'll okay. explain that these are proper bmw alloys, so these though. these are proper bmw genuine uh 18 inch alloys from the f series um standard m sport wheels from the f series okay uh which i bought off facebook for 250 quid okay. right for the whole set for the whole set including tires but That's the tires amazing. were all worn so they went in the bin straight away took them to a garage in um birmingham and had them fully refurbed in oe silver um yeah. and then put my PS4 tyres which I had on my MV3 alloys just straight on and I actually sold my MV3 alloys for the same price that I paid for these oh okay so, so it, only, it only cost me the price of a refurb which was cheaper than if I'd have had my MV3s refurbed because I took the alloys off the car and just left them with them right looking down the side here what else have you got to do M performance stickers which is yeah. a, they're a bit tacky but I like them and for the sake of I've, £10 yeah. we'll give them a go I have to admit I've got them on my X5 as well if if and you've got off. the M Performance little badge here as well. Yeah. You? That's that this That's thing here, if anyone can see it. That little badge there is also something you can buy off eBay very cheaply. If, if they come off in the, with a pressure washer, I don't really mind. Don't really mind, no. <laughs> so coming round to the back of the car then. Yep. So number plates again. Yeah. 3D with the surrounds. Yeah. I also debadged it. So it took right. the, here it said 325D. Did it leave any holes? No, no, no. It was uh, just a bit of um, fishing wire and then some sticky stuff remover, which right. you buy from Halfers for about four quid for a can. And that's it. Just straight off, sticky stuff remover. It dissolves the glue and then just wipe it off and polish and it. That's and that's literally it's, all it and was. That's all it was. Um, and now that's just created a much cleaner look. Cleaner look, look. yeah. I, I agree do have you. a plan to wrap this in gloss black. 
Oh, this sort of uh, balance. Above yeah, the... so I do. I've got the wrap for that. I just oh okay. Uh, haven't been able to get it off yet, but I would like that wrapped in gloss black. Bit of a difference up here is this is the Maxton Design spoiler lip, which is just stuck on here, which was my birthday present to myself. So, so <laughs> basically, it's stuck. It's literally just. Yeah, it's stuck just on. an adhesive strip under here, all yeah. the way along, and it's just straight wow. on. So again, to get that off. Uh, would just be fishing wire underneath yeah. and a bit of heat and it would just come straight just off. Straight but it just you. finishes the back of it the car does. off nicely. I always found the I always found the back of the car a bit soft uh, yeah. and a bit in terms of looks. In terms of look. And, and 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 like it was squatting down. Whereas this just it just raises it up, gives it a bit of height and a bit of sportiness. Yeah. And you get the reflection in the um, in the tinted glass as well. Yes. With it, it indented at the good. top. Yeah, it does look pretty good. So we're going to have a look at the interior now. Yeah. You're going to talk us through stuff you've done to modify the inside. Which isn't much, to be honest. Okay. I haven't done much, but the, the, the thing I have done is I've changed the clocks here um, to red needles with white LEDs behind. Look at that, there you go. So if I just hold this here, yeah. I don't, you're not going to be... Ah, you can see the lights come on and on. Okay. So... If I turn it back on again, you'll see them all illuminate in white around the yes, edges. Yes, because usually with the BMWs, they're amber, aren't they? Everything's That's it. Amber. Everything's amber, and the needles are amber as well, and it just it doesn't look great. It looks very dated, actually. So these needles have been painted red with right. uh, nail polish. <laughs> Really? With yeah. Literally with got, nail That's polish. what the guy did. He painted them with nail polish and stuck them back on. And then behind you've got white LEDs for the cluster. Every yeah. light can be, you can, can be take changed. apart, take it apart and you can change it all. Right. I didn't want to go that far. I didn't want the whole lot in white with blue LEDs because that's not how it came out of the factory. Okay. The M3. Yeah. If, as I'm sure you remember, John, because you had yep. one. Yep. That had red needles with uh, white with white surrounds just i wanted that i wanted the look to still look stock but right. improved but just improved yes yeah. so you're making you're just making subtle tweaks yeah. rather than out and out Absolutely. um complete changes to the car aren't you Absolutely. that's what you're doing okay that's right I've, I've, I've had quite a bit of coding done and what does that mean what do you mean by coding so it's um often done with a device called carly which yeah. is um uh, something that goes into the OD, OBD port down here. Yeah. And then that reads the ECUs on the computer and you can change various settings that are either hidden or, uh, you know, available in different markets and stuff like that. Right. So, Such as? For instance, I had rear daytime running lights turned on. So right. in some countries they are mandated, but in the UK it's not. So that setting is in the barrels of the computer of right. the car and it's just activated another thing i did was have um the door locks so acoustic signal for locking and unlocking so that's when you lock the car uh, it beeps and when you unlock it it beeps twice um, interesting so that was a menu that's amazing was there. that it doesn't already do it no i know uh one of the big things which uh, this was the main reason why I took the car to have it coded, and all of this was additional to what I wanted, was that this car's got power fold mirrors. So you press the button here, and they and they power fold. Now, as standard, uh, when you lock the car, they stay extended. Right. And to power fold them, you have to press the button every time. Right. But now, when I press the lock key, lock button on the key, they fold in. And when I well, unlock the car, they fold out like they should so they have done from the factory. They're going to say, so basically you've now set, had it set so that if you want to, as soon as you lock the car, the mirrors automatically fold in. And yeah. you have to ask yourself, don't Why you? Wasn't that Why before? wasn't that in the, already? I can do it now. I'll press the button and then fold the mirrors. And I unlock it and they fold back out. And yeah. that was the main That's thing bonkers. I wanted. Why wouldn't Why you would do you that? Powerful mirrors, but they in didn't, factory settings, didn't yeah. With the, with well, so thing. you've had an acoustic signal for locking and unlocking. You've had automatic mirrors. Uh, fog uh, lights come on when I unlock the car. Right. So just as a as a courtesy for uh, illumination in the yeah. winter, you know, just a bit more light ahead. Uh, so we pretty well looked through everything then. Yeah. Uh, 
took my little job. So, okay, so, so what's your next plan? Do you have any, do you have another stage on it? Yeah, so I've been looking at forums and one thing that keeps popping up as the thing to do is something called an XHP remap for the gearbox, uh, which this is a six speed ZF box. Um, and it's meant to increase the, uh, decrease, let's just say, the shift times. Uh, it adds a few other features, but it's essentially a remap for the gearbox. Like you'd remap an engine, it's a remap for the gearbox. So I'm going to look into that, and that's my next, next thing step. I'd like to do. I'd like to remap right. the engine itself as well, but I'm going to the gearbox first. Um, see how we get on with it. Okay. Well, I hope you found that video as interesting as I did. Um, apologies if the sound quality was a little bit bad. The very important point that Steve was trying to put over at the end of that video was he's now going to do a gearbox modification to the car as well. It's basically reflashing the gearbox with some new software to see what the effect is when you do that and he's basically said that I can go along and film that process so that will be really interesting to watch. In the meantime thanks for watching catch you on the next one. So having so, so basically we've covered everything then now. Yeah we've got that's all the mods that I've done on almost coming now. Is it